put off by how long this video is, don't worry, I try to jam pack my videos with as much content and as much detail as I possibly can. Anything I feel I can comment on and that I feel you might be interested in, I pretty much put in the video. I try not to repeat myself and talk fairly fast. If the video is too long for you, I have recorded a shorter version and the link will be in the description box. Fantastic Four in 3D. No? No 3D. Okay, Josh says no 3D. The um, four 20 somethings are chosen to teleport to an alternate and dangerous dimension. The experience alters their physical appearance in shocking and surprising ways and leaves them with what you might call superpowers. Now, the, the four of them must master their powers and fight together in order to save the world from a former friend turned enemy. This is apparently not an adaptation, and I I like what we got here, but I am kind of with random guy on that one. You know, the the comics there are decades of storylines that you could take something from, but yeah, and the you know Michael B. Jordan who plays Johnny Storm in this you know, called, said of the movie that it's about these four outcasts that, I think he was the one who said outcasts, anyway, these four who experience, you know, have an accident and end up with disabilities that they then have to cope with and try to find a way to, you know, live with these new conditions. And Simon Kinberg, who will write it, says it celebrates all the comics, this dysfunctional surrogate family of scientists, and it it's more of a science adventure than a superhero film. I would definitely agree with that. Last minute notes. The movie is an hour and 33 minutes. I honestly expected it to be longer. Not disappointed, but I think, I don't remember exactly who it was, but one of the Tiquitic guys said that nobody knows how to make a 90 minute movie. It might have been Rob, might have been Rob Jones. Wait, Walker. Rob Walker. This time they seem to do it. So, yeah, I agree with him. It's it hardly ever happens, and this time it did. And kudos, Dakepo, please. If that's how you pronounce that, I am not Italian. Anyway, the to take something that happens very early on. I know we're not supposed to think about this kind of thing, but pretty much the opening is Reed in class and he's like being called up and you know, he has to give a presentation on like a science, you know, career thing. And immediately after, the teacher calls up Ben Grimm and I'm just like, do you not know how the alphabet works? Because w whether, usually it's done by like last names. Sometimes, you know, it's it's done by first names, such as, you know, if Mrs. Krabappel really wants to take something out on Bart. To be fair, he deserved it. I've never seen a, you know, it, it go, you know, RR and then BG. Don't know how you how you got to there. We find out what where its clobber in time comes from, and yeah, it's yeah. A lot of people aren't gonna like it. I'm one of them. Now the 
you know, it's it's very nicely established early on that both Ben and Reed come from this, you know, low class neighborhood and looks to be all white, like white maybe not not white trash, but just yeah, low, low class now. And the you know, Reed is found at a science fair by the, the Dr. Franklin, I want to say, who I don't know, I guess just trolls science fairs or something. And the... This is a movie with a lot of speechifying. You saw it in the trailers. You know, this, you know, deep foreboding kind of, and, and lots and lots of speeches. Many of them delivered by Dr. Franklin. At one point in this, they do ask, is he going to give the speech? He's going to give the speech. That was kind of funny. Does not quite alter the fact that this has a lot of speeches. Now, and it's, it's said very early on that Sue specializes in like pattern recognition and yeah that's very nicely done with the you know both established and used. First teleportation involves sending a CG like really really clearly CG ape through. I, I don't watch the the Planet of the Apes movies but from the trailers we're able to do you know Ape CG better than was seen in this, and it's also it's the only bad CG in this whole thing. So yeah, I mean, not bad CG, just you can tell that thing is not a real living thing. You know, that's something somebody animated. Now, there's one point where Reed, I want to say, passes out, but I'm. This close to thinking he actually fainted, which is just honestly for a while in this one read you're not really given any reason to I want to say like not despise read because yeah he comes off as kind of just selfish and a jerk like yeah he's super smart but he's like you know, excuse me, he's, when he demonstrates the teleporting stuff, other stuff gets broken a lot of the time, and he keeps on doing it. There's one point where a vent is crawled through, and I like that this movie actually acknowledges that they're not big enough for people to crawl, crawl through because it's Reed and he's clearly like making himself, you know, stretching out and yeah, d doing new things. There's there's one point in this where it's like someone is is you know, you know someone's asked, are you scared? You should be scared, and you know, given that that you know, one of the inspirations for this film, I couldn't help but you know mentally go. You should be afraid. Be very afraid. Now, in this, you really feel the force of the the powers of the four. Like when you watch Iron Man one, when he's flying, you're flying with him. You know, in this, you really feel the force. You know, you can practically, you know, sense the the heat from Johnny's, you know, fire and like grim, you know, just yeah. You can practically feel, you know, when when you know when he hits something, it you know you can practically tell. You know, it's as if something, you know, really big just, you know, yeah. And he's huge in this, which is awesome. 
Now, this doesn't really sexualize Sue, which I was glad to see, and at the same time, it doesn't really... It doesn't render her asexual either. It's like she... You know, she has sexuality and it's under her control, and I really like that. Because she, I mean, Kate Mara is a beautiful young woman. Now, in this, nah, I should save that for. I think that might more or less cover what I can talk about in this. One thing I really missed in this was the the relationship between Ben and Johnny, where Johnny's always, you know, getting on Ben's nerves, and you know he's he's kind of a yeah, you know, Johnny's always like you know pulling jokes on him and, you know, cracking jokes at him and, and at his expense and such. And that didn't... There's, there's a little bit at the very end, but that's it. Now, in addition to weight to their powers, you also get a good sense of their powers. You very quickly get a good idea of what what it is they can do and to what extent they can do it you know how powerful they are there are some of the you know action scene clips we see in the trailers are not in the finished film and i suppose that covers that Now, some have said that the cast, you know, are too young, and, you know, I'm pretty much with the blockbuster buster on, you know, for one thing, these are great actors, and, you know, it, it works for if you're, you know, making a series out of it, you know, this is what X-Men First Class did as well, you know, to, to an extent. And they're based on the ultimate Fantastic Four, who are younger. See? Now, Sue was not in, in, in the trailers. I did not get a real sense of Sue's character. And I am really happy to say that in the film we do. And, yeah... You know, in in the trailers, also in the trailers, it seemed there was some deceptive editing. I think the lines that they used are more or less in the film. They're just said at other times in order to other people's stuff. You know, in the trailer, it looks like she really does not like Reed. Like, you know, she says, you know, oh, it's really nice to have you. Really? No. You know, just... Yeah, in this, yeah, Reed and Sue get along, and, you know, anyone who's ever picked up the comic book, you know, kind of know that it might turn into a romance or something, but, yeah, you know, it's, you can somewhat see it moving in that basic direction without it necessarily, you know, it doesn't feel like it's, it doesn't feel forced, basically. But, yeah, you know, the, I suppose that covers that, but yeah, Mara Sue, I mean, Sue can turn invisible, she can control, create and control force fields, and she is highly educated, very dignified, and with integrity, independence, and a good sense of humor with a lot of sarcasm, and yeah, you know, 
in the trailer, she not only does she not come off, she doesn't. I didn't get a lot of sense about her character in the trailers, at least. And not only that, she seemed a little, I don't know, distant, different, d difficult to really relate to or to approach as just, you know, making friends with her or something. She is a little, you know, with, with Reed, he does kind of have to, you know, Yeah, she she doesn't like. There's there's some earning, but that's in part also because she knows she knows what he has done, and like I said before, he can be kind of a selfish jerk, so that might also be part of it. But her relationship with Johnny is very nicely done. They they don't have a ton of like interactions but there's sort of this sense of she'll like openly say like I'm glad you're here I'm I'm glad that we can be you know he's he's recruited to help work and basically you know help on the teleporters and basically yeah she she you know, she says, "I'm I'm glad you're here. I'm glad we're working together." And you know, first he, you know, and he's like, "Yeah, whatever." And then she walks away, and then he says, "I'm glad to be here too," or so, something like that. I don't remember the exact words, but yeah. So it's it's kind of you know, he's like, "Yeah, yeah, whatever." But you know, at his core, he does care, and he is willing to, you know. Yeah, to to tell her that he does care. It's just, you know, there's that, you know, a little bit that, you know, you have to get past to get there. But yeah, and her with her father is also great. The, the, the various relationships, I mean, I already mentioned that there's not that much of the Johnny and Ben one, but other than that, the relationships are fairly nicely done and yeah they they work and the you know the different situations you see these characters in make sense now but yeah in you know in the comics she's the one who takes charge if Reed can't and stops them bickering again I believe the blockbuster pressure was the one who pointed this out and yeah, in this you can completely see that. Again, they this doesn't completely get there. This is this is sort of the start, you know, for that whole thing and I can see them ending up like that. And definitely she's you know, she's one of the smartest. Of, she she may well be as smart or in some ways smarter than Reed, and that's not really, you know, and she'll point that out, but she's not, like, constantly trying to, you know, prove that she's better or something. It's just, you know, there's, there's that kind of, you know, they, they kind of all know that, and it's, it's you know, yeah. But, but it's not one of those things where, you know, the writers feel that they have to have this female strong character constantly be beating down strong male characters just to, you know, for there to be room or, or something. There's, you know, there's plenty of room for all of them. Now, the, that brings us to Johnny. This is the second movie where Michael is Air Jordan, and yeah, he's he's an adrenaline junkie, show off, uh, you know, kind of arrogant, and he has drawn a lot of ire for being cast in a role that was written to be white, and I don't know what to tell you. It's called a mixed family, and those exist.
adoption. It's, it's called adoption. I, you know, I, I know that the people who can't stand the idea of a black man being where a white man might be don't know what adoption is. They're, they're, they're happy as long as the baby is born and then they don't want to think about it after that point. That d did not take long for this to get political. Anyway, yeah, he, he flies and he's on fire and he tosses fire. I, I never understand when people say, you know, why did you know the the other three get just one power when Sue got two? She can go invincible, invisible, and she can make force fields. Johnny can both fly and do fire stuff. Flight has very little to do with fire. And yeah, he's you know he's a great engineer, and that's established very early on. Like he built this car that is, you know, and yeah, he, he, you know, races with it right in the street. And that he's, he's, it's good that he does that because he's one of the only people who gets a reaction out of Dr. Franklin. Otherwise, Franklin is just speechifying at everyone. But with, with Johnny, it's like, I can't believe you did that. You know, he's, he's finally a person, but in, instead of just, you know, this grand figure that just speaks in, you know, motivational speeches with, with big, yeah. Anyway, yeah, he's, he's real charismatic. Now, and that brings us to Ben. This time it's done with, you know, effects, not a suit, which, you know, that was something that was good about, you know, Chiklis, Michael Chiklis, I think, is the name, you know, and anyway, Chiklis and Michael Bailey Smith, perhaps best known for Charms Balthasar. Yes, I know Mike Bailey Smith more than I know Chiklis. He is both protective of and kind of disturbed by Reed, and they were friends since childhood, and after the Once he gets his powers, he is incredibly strong and armored, you know, he's basically indestructible. And, you know, it's basically the, the two movies with Chiklis, I only watched the first one, but it looked pretty much like it does in the comic, it's especially in the, you know, usual comic. This, it looks like, yeah, it, it looks like a, a person had glue on them and then somebody took large rocks and smashed them onto this person and that's exactly what the thing should look like and it is, it is beautiful and yeah, like I already said, he's huge and like you might have noticed on the cover, Dude is huge, and that and that again is that is something that a suit could not do. He is really like, if you know, when he is standing, he, he's maybe as wide as four people, and as tall as you know, basketball player and a half, some something like that. And yeah, now the. You know, and there's a strong, like, you know, he he was a little bit of a jock, and it's you don't see that all that much in this, but yeah, jock, and he, you know, he helped Reed out back when Reed was just a nerd, and now, you know, he looks like this, and that has to, yeah, you know, that's, that's, he really breaks your heart, you know. Also, with how the the, the tragedy. No, no, I'm 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 not kidding. Dude will pick you up and and that brings us to Reed. The you know, as you see in some of the trailers, he MacGyver's together a teleporter from 
basic electronics and yeah he you know he's he's supposed to be some something of a leader you do see that a little bit in this and he gets complete elasticity now so yeah this a little bit of the group dynamic is there but it's you know that's again I believe Blockbuster Buster was the one to point this out the first movie I can confirm definitely got the the group dynamic I hear the second one did as well I did not watch that one I don't think I need to explain why and yeah the now and yes that leads us to Victor who is very determined determined and kind of somewhat aggressive if not necessarily like not not physically but yeah and he's a little bit of an anarchist he's like you know from very early on he's like you know the government this and that and yeah now and the actor worked very hard on getting the voice right and paid off now he's also very smart and the experiment leaves him very powerful now and yeah as Brian Lewis of the Cinema Snobs Friends points out fourth live action film to have the you know of, of the Fantastic Four and all four of them have Doctor Doom in them so yeah but at the very least you know now that this has you know maybe we can get someone else and maybe if if it's someone like Galactus, they won't screw it up completely. And yeah, this I'm almost certain that that's Dan Castellaneta, you know, the voice of Homer, as the fairly deadpan teacher of Reed. He has like two scenes. Which is, to be fair, more, one more than I thought. He's completely wasted. I, you know, why would you put someone that funny in in such a throwaway role that anybody could have? Yeah. Anyway, and the, you know, the the various, you know, among the government people that are involved with the experiments is straight up the leader from you know Hulk of course you know playing a different character here I've kind of danced around without really describing what exactly leads to them you know going to basically it's yeah it's an alternate dimension they you know they're not 100% sure where it is but they are able to send things there and once they find Reed they should be able to get things back as well and basically Victor helped them you know get to the point where they could send stuff there and you know he's kind of <laughs> he's not a fan of Reed to, to begin with given that Reed comes in and has you know similar ideas and has kinda sorta built onto them and yeah but the the you know it's it's again Dr. Franklin who is you know basically bringing them all together at the Baxter building where they are then trying to build this you know teleporter to another dimension and you know Reed is just there because you know science fair he proved that he could bring things back as well Sue is there and you know 
it's the fact that she is the adoptive daughter of Dr. Franklin isn't really why she's you know it's it's not like nepotism you know it's it's not JJ it's just this she's incredibly smart she deserves to be there and yeah Johnny is there because when he raced didn't go exactly as planned and yeah his father basically says you know you're gonna work for me I'm gonna keep your car until you've built this teleporter and yeah and then the that yeah and Ben is not working on it at all he you know he helped read you know he helped Reed move there and that's basically it and yeah I'm not gonna give away exactly how he gets to be part of the experiment because it's yeah the this is brought to us by the director of Chronicle, which was also an excellent superhero origin film. He also helped write the script, you know, both to this and to that. And here he's joined by Jeremy Slater, who I don't really know, and Simon Kinberg, whose work speaks for you know speaks for itself. And yes, he has you know paid back for excuse me, the X Men Three with X-Men Days of Future Past. Now, some point to this being, you know, much darker than the comics, which, you know, even the darker writers still had to work with this thing that was made up during the 60s, which was not the most serious time for comic books. And yeah, some have pointed out that in tone, you know, if if you looked at stuff like this and, you know, just if if you watched the trailers and you didn't know it was Fantastic Four and you didn't, you know, recognize, I mean, the, the characters more or less look the way they, you know, more or less the way they should, again, given that they're much younger. And, yeah. If, if you didn't see one of them or you didn't otherwise recognize, you know, if you just see images from the trailers and you don't know it's Fantastic Four, you might not be able to tell that it's Fantastic Four, and that is a little unfortunate. Now, the director pointed to movies like Scanners, The Fly, and movies by Spielberg who, you know, yeah, as you know, don't need to really specify everyone knows Spielberg and said, you know, he said that it it's in part Spielberg meets Tim Burton. This is the only Tim Burton movie I own. Two words, Ray Park. Okay, four words on sale. Six among the words available in you know f f physical copy so yeah and you can very much tell these you know oh and yeah also you know the the Raimi Spider-Man movies which I you know when when it comes to David Cronenberg's work I you know I find excuses to watch them when it comes to Raimi's Spider-Man movies, I, I, I do what I can to find excuses not to watch them in spite of the fact that I do own both two and three. Again, on sale, physical copies, you know. I miss physical, you know, actual physical stores where you go to buy movies. Anyway, yeah, you can very much, I mean, this is, this of course does not have the gore of a, you know, and the effects tend to be CGI, but again, it actually, I mentioned before that, 
you know, the rest of the CGI is much better than the ape. The CGI in this is amazing. You, you know, it is seamless. You, you just, yeah, it, it blends perfectly in and it just, yeah, some of the stuff breaks your heart. You know, as you see their bodies, yeah, very, very much like the fly, just kind of falling apart, you know, there's, there's this sh image of Grimm kind of trying to dig his way out of all this rock and, and yelling, and can, can anybody hear me? Please help me, you know, and it's just devastating and just, yeah, you know, it, it, like Michael B. Jordan said as well, you know, disabilities kind of thing and, yeah, and, even without the gore, maybe I already said that, but yeah, it, some of this is pretty horrifying stuff. Now, Beltrami said of his score that it's eerie, mysterious, leaning towards fantasy, and that's very true, and it fits really well. Now, this to an extent, you know, you, you get an idea of why they wind up with the powers that they do, you know, more so than in Chronicle. And this does not have any found footage. I, I did think it would have, you know, I do think it would have been kind of cute if there was just this brief, you know, s someone, you know, like bringing up a, a camera to, to film something, you know, spectacular and then, like, especially then Michael B. Jordan should have turned to them and said, what are you doing? Who, you know, who would film, you know, doing weird stuff? Something like that. Now, I suppose there is no reason for you to stay through the end credits. At least my theater did not have anything afterwards, which, yeah. This is very based on realism. I really like the designs, except for Doom's face slash mask. It's explained. You completely understand what it is when, you know, there, there gets to be a point in this movie where you completely understand why that. But, but yeah, I just, I prefer pretty much the traditional. I also quite like the ultimate one, but, yeah, definitely not... Yeah, the, the one here is just really boring. And, yeah. Now. And with all these positives said, this is by far the fewest joke having slowest and heaviest of comic book adaptations that I've seen in a long time. It's by no means a bad movie, but do be aware that it's, yeah, it, it really is more this, this small group of kids who build a dimensional portal, go through it, and come back having to really cope with what they've experienced that what what you know what this means for their future for their lives from now on more than a superhero film and a comic book please comment thumbs up and subscribe for more content